All right, folks, we're going to show you real quickly how to take a DEM, in this case, the Charleston, West Virginia East DEM, and convert that over to a 3D print file. Uh, right now, I have open the Windows 10 version of QGIS, the newest version. I just actually just downloaded this uh, just about an hour and a half ago. The reason I'm going to show you on Windows 10, and you may or may not be able to tell right now that I'm working on a a Mac in Parallels. Uh, here's the actual Mac version, Mac desktop of QGIS, <clears throat> and then back to the Windows 10 version. Uh, again, there's a reason I'm, I'm going to do this on Mac initially. I found there's some bugs in the Mac plugin, and uh, it, the, the plugin still works. You just have to go through a couple of extra steps to make it work. So as I come back to Windows, I will start the export, and then while that's exporting, I'm going to hop back over to the Mac version and kind of show you the workaround on that. So again, uh, the newest version of QGIS, and I've got kind of the, the eastern end. This is Kanawha City, east of Charleston, West Virginia. And in behind this, in the USGS Topo Quad, I've got our... Um, DEM that I believe came from uh, the State Addressing and Mapping Project from 2003, I believe is when these were generated. Yes, 2003. And um, <clears throat> I have downloaded and already installed this plugin called DEM to 3D. And I'm just going to go ahead and open that up right now. It brings up this little box. And again, I'm going to show you how it's supposed to work in in Windows first and then we'll hop over to the Mac version of this and show you how it doesn't work as well over in Mac. Uh, it still works, but again, I'll show you kind of the workarounds to it if you're a strictly Mac's set, uh, Mac setup. So pretty straightforward. Uh, we are wanting to use the UTM, the DEM here for it to clip to and you could use the entire extent of that DEM. Our 3D printer is in no way large enough to print a full-scale USGS quad. Uh, so I'm just going to pick a small extent here, uh, which in this case, uh, we're just going to draw a little box here around the, the east end of Kanawha City, up into Campbell's Creek Hollow, down kind of into northern Malden. And just clip that real quick. Um, Here's one thing, the, the plugin does not bring the box back to the front window, so you do have to come down, look for it, pull it back up, and you see it, it fills out the extents for you once you click on that. The next box we're going to need to fill out is basically the, the print resolution, I guess is the best way to describe what this is. Um, since these DEMs are kind of at a high scale, I printed some of these at a slower resolution or this. Uh, you know, 0.2 millimeters, uh, it, it didn't make a difference to me, so I am going to put this at a half a millimeter. Uh, again, that's probably based on your own experimenting with your own printer, and we do want this to print to scale, 124,000. As you see, uh, you see me fill that out, it's kind of auto-adjusting how big the entire uh, print is going to be. Exaggeration factor, again, that's kind of up to your own uh, uh, how you want it to print out. Uh, I found that point 0.1, I'm sorry, one extreme, factor of one was a little too much for, for this area. I dropped it down to a half. Um, and uh, this, this is one of the boxes that kind of disappears over in the Mac uh, version. And again, we'll show you that. There's, this functionality up here doesn't work very well in the Mac. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm showing you over here in Windows first. Uh, the height, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to copy what the, the map came up as the lowest meters in height there. Uh, if you make that smaller or bigger, uh, of course, if you make it bigger, it's going to not print the lowest elevation on the map you know, on the 3D print. If you make that smaller, you're going to get a much thicker base. Uh, it goes ahead and does about a two millimeter base uh, uh, just through default. Uh, so if I would make this elevation smaller, the elevation would get bigger, I'm sorry, the, the base of the print would get thicker and thicker and thicker, as you can kind of see if I make this 500. Um, it's kind of starting at a zero point at the bottom of the map. So, so basically, in my case, uh, the way I like it, uh, 
I use it the the its lowest point elevation. Again, it puts a two two millimeter, two millimeter base already on the bottom of it. So that's really all there is to that. And this is setting. Again, you can do some of your own changes here. Um, we're just going to go ahead and export that at XTL. It's going to ask me what I want to call it. I'm just going to call it uh, uh, Charleston e oops, East. And this is saving it as an STL file. The STL file format is what not only our 3D printer needs, but it's kind of the, the standard 3D print file. And we're just going to save that. And it's going to do through two functions here. It's going to initially build the STL and that's going to create it. Uh, and that's what's going to take a little bit of time. So as it's doing that, I just hopped over to the Mac uh, version of QGIS. I'm not going to run all the way through all those steps again because, uh, again, one, they don't work as well with the plug-in here. At first, QGIS works uh, as a whole just like the Windows version, but this plug-in uh, that I was using to export to uh, the 3D print file does not work. Um, well, let me rephrase that. It does work, it just doesn't work uh, like it should. You see the, the form's resolution is off. We can't see the ex uh, exaggeration factor. Uh, what took me the longest to figure out how to get to work, which wasn't working, is the print extent. Um, in this case, I can choose, in this case, I'm going to use the West because that's where our office is. Uh, don't know if you heard the little bell ring there, but it was just telling me over in Windows that it finished exporting the file. Um, so I'm going to come and use this tool just like I did over in the Windows version. I'm going to try and do this and nothing happens. Uh, I'm getting that uh, dong to tell me that something's not right. Um, I could, of course, this to extent does work uh, to the map extent, but again, that would create a whole USGS topo quad 3D print file, which again, we're not going to be doing that. So what I found I had to do was cancel this out, uh, come into the raster tools that are built into QGIS, come to extraction, and then come to the clipper tool. In this case, what I want to extract out or clip to is on the West Quad. And I'm going to clip down here by the Patrick Street Bridge, which is where my office is, down to the Elk River. I'm going to clip that out. Uh, we're going to save that real quick. Uh, clip, clipped, extent. And this is going to save us an extraction of the DM. We're done. Close that out, and it's under hidden underneath some things here. Oops, I mean, clipped too many things off. Okay, so there's the clipped file, and here's another little bug issue that I had with the DEM to 3D print file or the, the print plugin with the Mac version was regardless of what I had up on my screen. Uh, let's drag this guy up here so we can see it. Um, if I open the three, uh, the DEM to 3D print file again, even though I have chosen clipped extent, um, and when I click that, it, it kind of, as you can see, it, regardless of what you got on the screen, it chooses the biggest thing you've got out there. I could turn on, um, I could turn on the both of the USGS quads come back to that file, um, still it's, it's looking at my clipped extent, um, but anytime I hit extent, uh, now you can see that it's, it's one even larger. Uh, so I, you have to turn everything off with the exception of what you're wanting to export. The, um, now we've got clip extent, and you can see it draws a nice little rectangle about what I want to do. Uh, again, 0.5. And I'm going to print this to scale again, 124,000. Again, I can only assume uh, uh, where this is going. Um, I'm going to assume that's at zero now. I'm hitting the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to assume that's at zero because it's by default this thing's going to print a two millimeter tall file. 
I'm like, I guess that's half exaggeration. That's a one pull uh, exaggeration factor. Export that to X2 STL in the 3D print file. And again, this version always goes to the craziest places that I want it to go. So I'm gonna real quickly hop over to DEMs and um, say Mac version. Okay. Cancel that out and went to the wrong screen. We're back looking at back at the Windows version now, saying it's created that. I'm going to cancel that out. And I'm going to, again, using um, the Mac desktops, here's our MakerBot 3D software, 3D printer software. And I'm going to come up and open. And we've got Charleston East, which is the file we created I'll tell you what, let's not do that first. I'm going to show you the, the Mac version of, of, of right here around our office. Um, as that opens up. So here's the one we did in Mac, the one that I was having difficulty with uh, figuring everything out. It looks like maybe I wasn't at the one uh, elevation exaggeration factor it looks like maybe it's a little lower because that looks a little flat to me for even uh, down here in Charleston West Virginia uh, Elk River coming in Canal River uh, this would be the west end of Charleston and here we've got uh, Corridor G going out uh, but that's not the one we're that interested in. let's get rid of that one and let's open up right, Charleston East A little bit bigger file and there we have that that we saw that it wasn't one uh, exaggeration file it looks quite a bit better uh, we've got the Jaeger bridge going out and about um, you can also tell this is a older DM due to that Eagle's Nest housing project that's on top of this ridge right here uh, we're not seeing it being leveled out uh, by, by those apartments that are up there um, so basically, we've created a 3D model, a uh, 3D print model that I could just right now hop up here and export to the printer right down the hall from us. Uh, but you see, um, we're currently printing something else on it. Um, so that would have to get done before I would send this over. Uh, just, just for all your all's uh, information as well, this, the, the building that this 3D printer is in, in is here for community use. Anyone can come and export files to it. It can be connected to remotely. You do have to be in the building at least one time first uh, to get a unique key that connects to your your smartphone or your your, your desktop laptop. Um, or you can just email me the print files you wanted to use. Uh, the software here, the MakerBot software that I have up is free to download from MakerBot. Anybody can can download it, use it, play with it. And again, feel free to contact me. We let anybody print to this 3D printer. Um, and especially if you're in the Charleston, West Virginia area, it's right here in town, you can, the building's open. Uh, you could talk to the, the fine ladies up front and they can actually even give you a code that you can punch into the building and be in here 24 seven. So if you printed it at six o'clock at night or and came by at uh, 10 o'clock in the evening to come pick it up, you could punch right in and get to the get the print files. So anyway, I hope that helps you get them out. Oh, uh, let me back up a little bit. Um, another reason why uh, I will make another tutorial, the, the these older 2003 DEMs, which are a little bit lower resolution, um, you can see that the, uh, especially kind of down the wrong, along the river, it's kind of jaggedy edges where Things kind of hop down. This is, a, I believe, it was an old quarry over here. Uh, then along the river, it's pretty, pretty jaggedy, and that's the, kind of the way it prints them out. Um, if it were me and I had kind of more time, or, or a project that I wanted this to look a lot better for, 
um, I would spend some time and probably, uh, again, I'll, I'll work through another tutorial, probably using Arc, ArcGIS, I would uh, get some higher quality DEMs, maybe generalize or, or try to get some uh, better accuracy elevations to get rid of some of these artifacts that are in here. Uh, but otherwise, for, for just me playing around and show you how quick and easy QGIS has that plugin already built into it. That's a pretty quick, easy, cheap uh, way. QGIS is free, the plugin is free. The 3D printer that is right here is free to use as well. So if you're here um, in the area, or if you're even remotely away and you happen to be coming through the Charleston, West Virginia area, give me an email. I'll put it up on the, the end of this tutorial or down at the bottom of the YouTube channel and we can get something out to you. Anyway, thanks a lot. Talk to you later.